So with this video we're going to have a look at the placenta. The placenta has two key functions. Uh, firstly, the first function is to maintain pregnancy through hormone production and the second function is the exchange of materials between the mother and the fetus. So the placenta is actually there because as the fetus grows larger the surface area to volume ratio starts to decrease and this therefore means that it is harder for that fetus to absorb nutrients um, and therefore the placenta will allow uh, better nutrient absorption and therefore a longer gestation period so the fetus is able to stay inside of the mother's uterus for a longer period so in terms of this drawing you actually don't need to be able to draw this I just find it easier to understand this in terms of um, a visual format so here we have the uterine wall and obviously this is part of the mother and this therefore will contain maternal blood so I'm just going to represent that with this little red line so when the placenta starts to grow it puts finger-like project projections which are called villi into the uterus wall and I'm just going to draw these very very simply um, but actually they're a little bit more complicated and tree-like than how I'm going to draw them. But these are some villi, which means that the placenta has attached itself to this uterine wall. Now within the placenta, this contains fetal blood. And the fetal blood will go down into these finger-like projections, these villi that are going into the uterine wall. So this here is the placenta. And this here is fetal blood. So the blood that is going through this placenta down into each of these villi will then also go up to then reach the fetus that is developing up here. So my fetus I'm going to draw is probably not going to be the most exciting thing. Um, I'm a little bit worried it's going to become more creepy than scientific. So I'm just going to draw it as this little bean and call it a fetus. I don't want to freak anyone out with my weird drawing. So there we have the fetal blood going from the placenta up into the fetus there. Now the fetus is not just left out on its own out here, it is actually cocooned in a really nice plush cushion. Which is called the amniotic sac and the amniotic sac contains amniotic fluid. Now the amniotic fluid is there to provide support and protection for the baby and obviously the amniotic sac is there to contain that amniotic fluid. Now this part here that contains the blood vessels going from the placenta to the fetus in the amniotic sac is the umbilical cord. Now in terms of where how these are made, the placenta, the amniotic sac, um, are all made out of fetal cells. So they are not made out of any maternal cells. All of this is produced from fetal cells and fetal tissue. 
So in terms of the exchange of materials between the fetal and the maternal blood, they need to go through the placental barrier, which is actually selectively permeable. Now actually at no point does the maternal blood and the fetal blood touch each other. So there is this placental barrier ensuring that at no point this, the maternal blood, touches this, the fetal blood. But actually they're very, very close together so that they can exchange um, different types of nutrients across this selectively permeable mem membrane that is the placental barrier. So down here what we will write is we've got maternal blood and then we have fetal blood. This then is our selectively permeable placental barrier. So things that are coming from the mother and going to the fetus are things like glucose, oxygen, water, and also antibodies, so very useful things for that fetus. And then coming back from the fetus to the maternal blood are waste products, so carbon dioxide, urea, um, and also some water will be going back from the fetal blood back to the maternal blood. So again, the maternal blood and the fetal blood don't actually ever come into contact with each other. There's just this exchange of materials across the selectively permeable membrane that is the placental barrier. Um, and this is why obviously a mother and a baby can have completely different blood types.